Welcome to the OAPN podcast with your host Adar Sakre. No bullshit, no cuts. 100% raw conversations with 0% fucks to give. We don't encourage the consumption of alcohol, but if you want to open up a cold one while you watch this, it's not a bad idea. Welcome to episode number 75 on a personal note with Adar Sakre. Uh yet another episode, uh, yet another story for y'all. On the last episode we had uh Taladas uh a brilliant story there uh, if you all haven't watched that yet you should definitely check that out today um, uh today is going to be interesting today is going to be interesting uh, i shall introduce him but uh, first let's say hi to sad khan hi sad hi adesh how are you good how are you feeling today sad good man i'm like a little good. nervous because the way you introducing me or not introducing me it's like almost like a half and half no <laughs> what you going to say what is cuz usually in every uh, interview or every podcast that i have been on they give me this whole like you know one like two three lines of intro and stuff like that mm. and i was nodding and you know being have that sort of a half fake smile going on and but nothing happened so i just went <laughs> Uh, and I was like, okay, wow, that's a short <laughs> intro. So yeah, fine, fine. But anyway, Saad is here. Uh, you know, for those of you who have uh, followed his work, of course, you will be happy to know that his latest work, Constable Girpade, is out now, and uh, it's trending on Amazon Mini TV. Yes, I'm uh, yes. pretty happy to see that. But I think uh, you know uh, what's more interesting today, and I invite you all to get into the story for a few reasons, right? One. as a filmmaker as a filmmaker the barriers that he's been challenging and uh, there's also this brand around you now that uh, you not only challenge these barriers but you've gotten really good at it thank you right uh, thank you yeah language barriers uh, barriers of what definitions exist around uh, film making uh, the barrier of what comedy can mean in a country like this and uh, what it can go towards and pioneering that change of uh, definition i would say uh, also you know the different types of people that he works with i think one of the things that has always made me curious is like i have a certain perception of you and then there is a certain perception of the people you work with and i'm like how are these two matching <laughs> <laughs> wow how the that's a very good insight yeah good how insight. the hell does saad khan how the hell does saad khan work with xyz and how is it making sense <laughs> right and it does make sense and that exactly shows you what i mean by breaking those barriers right and uh, that's something we are going to kind of talk about i think comedy again um, saad has his own style of comedy and uh, i'm sure there are inspirations to this comedy and uh, i'm sure there is a vision for that comedy in terms of how he wants to take it for those of you who have enjoyed saad's work uh, great i mean we welcome you to kind of come in a little more behind the scenes in terms of what goes on in his mind for those of you who have probably discovered his work maybe the last year or two uh, you should know that he's been doing this for more than a decade now Yeah. right yeah. and maybe not many of you know that and uh, i mean it's cliche and it's said every single time and it continues to make sense that some of these successes don't come overnight but it's almost looked at overnight even today it's one of the saddest things but it exists and it's important to call it out all right absolutely yeah, yeah so uh, that is it uh, personally of course uh, i've also grown up watching uh, your work and watching your journey and i've always had an eye for uh, certain people and uh, you were there on the radar for whatever reason and even before i started doing this i used to follow what you're doing okay where is sad khan involved and everything and now it's uh, it's like this uh, jigsaw puzzle uh, coming together and of course there are a few missing pieces which i'm sure sad is going to talk about so yeah welcome to episode number 75 welcome sad thanks for making it here man thank you adarsh it's uh, i think it's one of the best introductions you should definitely yeah. if there was an imdb page for it you would need like 10 right now it's awesome uh that's no, that's great of you that's very sweet of you that you have uh, looked at the stuff that i do uh, yeah. so there's no real question here so all i'm going to say is that i think uh All I'm going to say is that am I clear? Am I audible? Yeah, as long as you're in line with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you want me to like come forward? That's what she said. Uh, but 
yeah, no, this is fine. Uh, as long as it's in line with yeah, you, it's yeah. fine. Oh. Um, I, 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 yes, you know, one thing that you mentioned about perception, right? I mm. think I've also had a lot of perception about actors that I didn't work with before I actually uh, started working with them. And it's been such a uh, pleasurable journey. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm not from a film family. Mm. Um, Khan is there in my family name and I'm so lucky I have it <laughs> because I, I feel like I, I really love my name and I know I don't I don't want to sound braggish about it but it's very I love glamorous it. it has a it has you know vazan bolte na hindi it has it a has. weight <laughs> and I, I know because when I started doing theater uh, I started at a very early age at 16 yeah I directed my first play at 16 and I still remember uh, mm. I was in uh, 12th standard and mm. everyone around me was like what are you doing like what do you you did like you want like make a play like write and direct a play like my parents and because I was always I was always into elocution and debate in school yeah. and I started writing when I was fifteen because I used to read quite a bit mm. so when I directed my first play I remember this sense of complete uh, internal chaos around me you know mm. but it, it just I I'm just the kind of person that I feel if I if if I want to cross the road and if someone tells me don't I will cross the road. <laughs> and I will run <laughs> and I'll maybe do a sort of a partial somersault while I'm at it. just to show off not even to show off because I'm like he, they said I can't do it because uh, <laughs> in school I had I didn't have a good time in school um, there was a bit of bullying and oh, I yeah? I didn't yeah I didn't enjoy it mm. um, food, food are they in touch bullying, are they in yeah. touch today uh, they have come and watched my stuff but they don't know it's the same mm. guy because I completely changed mm. I think I they I, don't even remember the sad. They do remember, of course, because I, mm. I was very hurt by what happened in school, mm. uh, and um, I feel that aspect of how kids, uh, mm. when they're in seventh, eighth, ninth grade, when they actually need to be there for each other, yeah. they end up uh, side, you know, sidelining or singling out some people, and I think that there was something that was a very early uh, um, sort of a signal for me that I'm not going to be a part of that nonsense. Mm. So when I did eventually um, start making, start directing plays, I found success quite early uh, at 17, 18, because I was relentless by that time. And I had these same guys come for my play and want to take, at that time, there was no selfies. There were autographs. You know, they had these slam books where you could, you could sign. What, you gave an autograph at 18? I, yes, of course, I did, I did. Yeah. You did? At, at 18, yes. That's pretty 18. killer, no? I love it. <laughs> That's it pretty a, fucking but killer. But it was more killer because the, there were people who had, who were a part of the bullying uh, community who, oh, who had come for my play, not knowing I'm the mm. same guy from school. So when they did come and they uh, they looked at me, I was I was this really pimply kid in school. Right? Oh, you fought pimples? Oh, yes. I love it. I, but I, 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 you know, it just... It was literally like a how dark long, cloud. How long did you struggle of acne? Uh, I struggled for about a good two, three years. Yeah, that's fucked. And it was like a like dark cloud. It just went. And mm. I I went and, you know, I think when I was 16 or 17, it just cleared up completely. Yeah. And I was magic. a different person. Yeah. So nobody recognized me after that from school, you know. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, Thanks for getting that out. Uh, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> getting that out. <laughs> no pun intended. We're, we're not in skirting around the <laughs> Oh, shit. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I know where, uh, how this episode is going to go. But uh, anyway, man. Yeah, I think one point that you called out, right? One is the name Saad Khan. And I think it resonates with what you're doing and what you're aiming at doing. It's nice. It sounds good. But the other thing that you really mentioned was you don't come from a family of uh, filmmaking, right? Uh, how how has that changed? Are you able to communicate to your family what filmmaking is today? Have they understood better of off? Of course. No, yeah. My mom and uh, dad, very supportive. Mm. Um, I think they just gave up uh, after the first uh, you know couple of months. They just gave up, mm. but they were very supportive after that. I think it all boils down to that first article, you know, or the first... A radio interview or anything like that when I when I directed my first play a, a big production uh, when I was 18 I, I was Where featured was in Bangalore Times Where was uh, I did uh, the movie Scream on stage so I wrote to Wes Craven who's passed oh, away wow. now hmm. I, I was a big fan of the slasher genre at that time Okay. and when I was going and watching theatre at that time it was all about people standing in one spotlight 
you know mm. the directors wearing yeah. fab india clothes <laughs> it still exists uh, yeah, by I, the way. I, i was like how i don't want i don't i don't identify with that i can't be that person wow. i wanted to bring some sort of a glamour on stage so That's i nice. I loved watching Scream One at that time, mm. and I um, wrote to Wes Craven. There was no email at that time, so I'm talking about two thousand two, two thousand three. You wrote a letter. I wrote a letter, and after about three two months, I I actually got a response. What did you say? I letter? said that I'm this boy from Bangalore, and I'm started doing theater, and I want to do Scream on stage. I loved the movie, and you know I'm a huge fan. It was like this two sided letter that I wrote, um, and I remember it was West Hollywood. Uh, I had mm. written the letter. and i got a reply after 3 months and uh, uh, the, the the reply was very brief uh, and it was from west craven's assistant uh, giving west craven's directions that how many people is it going to cater to what is the monetary thing and uh, is it going to be uh, what is the copyright the copyright will be with obviously the makers but if you're not going to be making this much money if you're going to be making about this much money of off the sales then you can go ahead and do it but if it's anything more than this then you got you got you have to take further permission so i instantly wrote back saying this is what it is and it the entire process of getting the permission letter took about 6 7 months and i did scream on stage that was the first ever thriller done on stage so i got the mask ordered from the us i did all of that this was in 2000 wow 2004 really wild no if you think of it now that I, these possibilities existed and you just happened to see it and you just you just pursued it i just wanted to do it it sounds very wild the But fact that it happened it. 20 years ago yeah sounds very wild a lot of people would dream of it even today i just wanted to do it i was where do you go to school sir joseph's joseph oh yeah, yeah. Okay. that's nice yeah. i love i love i love that school time of bangalore man i mean that was the best time mm. the 2004 to 2008 or 2001 to 2010 mm. those 10 years that decade of schooling uh, in terms of what Cotonian Shield, and, yeah, you know, yeah, the, yeah. the 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 college fest, yeah. the school fest. It was real, brilliant. very real. So, uh, what year did you pass out from school? Oh wow, these are very um, uh, <laughs> controversial questions. <laughs> my age isn't there on Wikipedia. So oh I'm shit! Gonna, I'm gonna just you're gonna keep pass. it aside. <laughs> oh my god, that's a first. No, I, that's I, you know, a first. I, I, I'm, this is the first time I'm saying it on any interview. I hate the concept of time. I hate it. I know Mr Christopher Nolan loves it but I hate it. I hate that there is age and that we've put numbers to this scenario as much as I'm a product of a, a, yeah, you know yeah. of a science background mm. I just don't like the concept of time. Yeah you talk to you talk to people who have done a lot of psychedelics they say the concept of time is stopped for them. And yeah. uh, you know yeah. most people describe their trips saying uh, on my trip the concept of time had stopped and that's what i love the most okay and there's you know what you're saying i'm i'm relating it to the freedom you feel when you don't identify yourself with the concept of time right because it doesn't exist really i mean if you have to think of it anyway i uh, fuck ask that ask anyone their age yeah and the re- I rarely when yeah. anyone ask me about my age mm. i just smile or yeah, i just yeah. uh, you know I, i pass off another question saying you know great jacket or <laughs> what, a, what a lovely smile you have <laughs> no i think the reason i was asking that is uh, to just understand um, how things were around us at that point but i get it i think i can make an estimation <laughs> yeah <please. laughs> I'm gonna I'm go ahead with whatever estimation. I'm gonna be. go ahead with that, right? Yes. Uh, so Joseph's, of course, uh, I understand now because my follow-up question was, where did all this, uh, you know, initial exposure or knowledge come from? But again, uh, I understand. I have a lot of friends from the school, and uh, I've gone to the college, and I understand how much exposure we do get from going to an institution like that. But I feel like the exposure that you have. has also come out of your personal pursuit of the passion from reading to watching movies uh, was was that initial motivation like how did you figure out like great movies how did you figure out like great stories were you just like reading all the time were you watching movies all the time was a certain someone in your life telling you hey sad you should read this or watch this or how did that happen i i i was a liar <laughs> okay quite a bit of a liar <laughs> okay. um, uh, in my in my teens and and i'm being very honest the okay. reason is because i feel i used to lie about the stuff that i know mm. uh, and i was i would do it with with a plum so mm. the person in front would be like wow he's saying he's like he's got so much knowledge and i would come across as this 18 19 year old theater person at the time mm. i remember the senior theater people would get really angry because i would have these articles in bangalore times and you know 
uh, they used to put me on the front page because of the kind of glamour I would bring to the stage. But the senior theatre people, everyone at that time would just be like, they would be literally tossing and turning, saying that, why is this guy getting so much attention? I only became mature about what I want to do and my content when I went to the US. Mm. That was the only time because I went, uh, I got a, I got a scholarship because of all my work and I went to NYU. And mm-hmm. when I reached there for my master's after finishing my engineering, um, I uh, was sitting with 20 other people who were in the master's program for two years, the MFA program. And I had not seen The Godfather. I had not seen... Are you serious? I'm serious. I was 20, wow. 22. I had not seen The Godfather. I had not seen uh, Apocalypse Now. I had not seen, um, you know, Before Sunrise. And and all of these other people who were in my batch, and I was the youngest, had all this information. And I, at that time, I realized, you know, I'm not that much of a hot shit as I thought I was. You know? And I co- completely fell from grace in my head. Because by the time when I reached US, I had directed 16 plays three plays every year I had done all of that and I thought that I've arrived now I've got this master's you know de- degree program and I've got a scholarship and I'm here I'm going to kill it and the when they asked me what's your favorite movie I was thinking Raja Babu Kuli number one <laughs> <laughs> and they were like talking about you know Werner Herzog and they were talking about <laughs> you know uh, uh, and, uh, all these uh, you know Claude, Claude Chabrol and all these amazing filmmakers and I was like, who are these people? Are they making noises? What is this? What are these names? That's when I completely, you know, realized that I need to up my game. So I started watching three to four films a day, mm. every day. And I did that for a year, irrespective of however it was affecting my sleep. I would sleep three hours a night. Yeah. I would watch three films every day because I wanted to get up to speed. And within six to seven months, I was up to speed. Mm. And I was, that is when I had a perception about myself that yes, I might have all of these relentless pursuits and this want and this passion, but it has to back, be backed up with knowledge. Yeah. Otherwise, mm. it's literally a car without fuel. You'll fall flat. You'll yeah. fall flat. Yeah. But this is nice. Uh, so there is this early sign of wanting fame. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> this, Very you much. know, early sign of, dude, I, I want to be world famous. Very much so. In fact, I had yeah. a very um, Rangde Basanti, Amir Khan situation. Oh, really? To, to be honest, yes. Okay. Uh, a very similar. And R- RDB had released around the same time and I'd mm. I'd finished college and I would keep, I, I did my college from Ramaya. I did my engineering okay. from Ramaya. And Ramaya gave me a lot because that's where I ended up finishing 13, 14 plays across my four years. What you didn't study? I, 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 came, in the, I came in the press in my first semester and my principal at that time, Mr. Ram Murthy, Okay. called me offered me good day biscuits <laughs> because of the success because I was in the Bangalore Times front page and he's like uh, whatever you're doing do the same thing <laughs> or whatever you want for, from college we will give you but just make name for college that's Go sweet and it was amazing and mm. I got a lot of leverage mm-hmm. from Ramaya, from my teachers and stuff anyway um, uh, I think I, I, I went to, I went off tangent but that entire experience of from college life to being able to move from there into professional life. Uh, I finished college and there was this emptiness right after because now I'm, I've, got, I've finished it, but I kept going back to Ramaya to, to you know, do a theater batches for juniors because I started a theater club there. And I was literally oh, wow. that guy and I did not want to leave college. And I remember sitting in one place called Snack Point, having something called Ban Samosa with a bunch of friends. And I just zoned out at that time because I was I'd done with college and someone made a, a passing comment saying, why is this senior coming back to college? He's passed out, right? You know, this makes so much sense because there was one question when I was talking to you, right? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was uh, very delicately put. <laughs> like I'm, I'm doing all this research no, no, please, that, I, that I can do. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, great. Like he's, you know, he's doing the improv and he's doing these promotions and, and I'm like, but why is he going to colleges like so often? Right? Like, <laughs> I a, 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 a no, I'm saying now when I was like, I knew like you've come to Joseph's when I was studying there, by the way. Oh, wow. And uh, that's a story. Johnson was your teacher. Uh, no, yeah, this was so our principal was Daniel Fernandez. Of course, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, college. Yeah. Huh. So I'm going to come back to that story a little later. Yeah, sure. But uh, this particular thing, right? And I'm like, 
yeah co- coming to a college helps for pro- for promotion i understand but i did not understand how is he doing it with so much passion and that there are all these pictures of him like you know posing with students and wishing like the best for them and he's speaking about like you know these student directors who approached you and i, I didn't get it but now it makes sense because you realize that that's where the magic began completely yeah completely i yeah. um so that that fame ended for me in college mm. and i was like now what i'm done with college mm. i i have to move to something else i've done theater i need to start doing short films and i need to do something in my life and i never thought that that fame would ever be recreated because the kind of fame that i got in those four years in, in ramaya i would go to mcc mount carmel yeah. for their fest and i would be in the second or third engineering and i would be one of the judges Yeah, yeah with other theater people and my a team is performing and i'm judging them because i and i'm still studying and i remember it was it was crazy i mean i i still you know miss that time a lot but that time taught me that i also got arrogant of course because i was 1920 and i was you know popular right yeah, you were you were and i i, I yeah. obviously got arrogant and i was like i walked with this I could never say die attitude. Like I thought I'm James Bond from Sanjay Nagar and <laughs> all of that nonsense, right? But the thing is, eventually, when I went to the US, none of it was there. Yeah, like so I had to work. Shit! I was like, "What happened, man? Where is the fame? Mean? Yeah, what was do you that? know how they treat me in Ramay? <laughs> I, I actually, I never ever did that, but it was a very internal thing. Yeah, you were feeling that. I was, yeah, yeah. But it was beautiful because I worked. twice as hard twice as hard mm. then or thrice as hard to be like you know i would like to feel that again not in the sense of wanting to gloat but in yeah, the sense that i kind of realized that i was made for that you know so i completely worked and uh, by the time i was in the third semester or second semester of my masters i had already made two short films where no one else was, had already made any short film yet because what i brought to the table in my head i realized that was i just wanted to keep doing more and more i didn't want to stop right yeah. and i just didn't want anyone to feel like i've stopped so yeah. all my peers here my friends here they knew that i just suddenly disappeared i got i went off the radar when i went to the us for the first couple of months yeah i understand then yeah. i started resurfacing yeah um oh his film has gone to the khan film festival yeah, yeah. the short film yeah and they love wrote and about she. it here or oh, not love and she that's the movie that i made okay i made a short film called another kind of black oh wow i don't uh, know which is this mm. uh, <clears throat> movie about three people who are dead Okay. But they they have this transition from light to darkness, but they're stuck between that. They don't know where they are. So that place is called another kind of black. Ooh. So this is what I had written, uh, and I directed it. it. Was about seventeen minutes. It was a seventeen minute short film, hmm. uh, and then I got a chance. Uh, Khan Film Festival ha- was happening, and they were offering student filmmakers with a short film. So I sent it without thinking it get would get it would get, get selected, selected, and it did. Right, yeah. And uh, my university. spend money so that i could go to khan from the american pavilion they have pavilions of different countries and from the american pavilion every year 30 students is selected and i was one of the 30 students and it was i was just for me it was just new experience it is um, and i've seen that photograph and it's you can't recognize you <laughs> it doesn't look like you like i've seen i have curl your hair yeah yeah, yeah. doesn't look like you at all uh, yeah but it is me i, I promise <laughs> I, you just you know, sh- once you start aging, you realize that you, your 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 body fat changes, everything changes, right? So yeah, I'm much leaner, but it's me only. I gotta show you. You know, I I don't want to make this next question sound like Saad is a fame chaser because uh, he's talking. He's also talking about backing it up by work, which is what justifies it. And you said you resurfaced. you had this going on felt great and you went then you realized where you actually are and all of this happens that. when's the next time you tasted the same feeling again where like yeah bitch this is working wow it took a, it took a lot more time though it is took it? About 6 7 years after that when was that what oh, what what when had I, to when i made work? my first a film station Mm. With my, my Hindi film station again. That I was made, which year? Two thousand. I released in twenty fourteen, but so I started working in twenty eleven for it. Mm. So I, it, it took me about two and a half years to make that film. It was the first Hindi film from Bangalore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I realized very early that I need to start associating myself with firsts. 
because I was the first director to bring a Hollywood movie on stage. Mm. I was the first, uh, I, I started realizing that the first was always there. The first Bangalore boy, uh, they called me for the first Bangalore boy whose film went to Khan. So I, I started realizing that and I, it, but it, you know, again, uh, that realization came later. Others. It's not that I planned to make the first Hindi film from Bangalore. No, I didn't. I wanted to make a Hindi film because I went and worked with Mr. Ashutosh Gwarikar for a year and a half. And I was, uh, uh, you know, assisted him. I started as a clapper boy with him and I moved up to being the first AD. I handled the entire continuity for a project for him. Very respectful human being. I finished the end of that film. I asked the executive producer that how many of Ashushwar's assistants have become directors? He said, nobody. <laughs> oh, shit. And I was like, I want to be that guy. So I I used to go to, uh, in Bombay at that point, Lokanwala was filled with aspiring directors. I'm talking about 2010, 2011. Mm. I said, I need to get out of this. So I came off to Bangalore. When I came to Bangalore, nothing was happening. And I was like, now I need to start. So then that's when I started. Again. You know, that thing that you just said, like you didn't chase to be the first, but you had to be because your heart was calling it out saying this needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And you had to. And I would say 10 years later, it's the same. You're still doing a lot of things for the first time and maybe that's the magic right like yeah. and that's what goes back to the definition of challenging these barriers and maybe it all like makes sense now but so that feeling so it's great that you're having this challenges of uh, having this challenge sorry of breaking a barrier but uh, this is the right point to discuss what comes with it right the right point to discuss what comes with it in terms of uh, not being able to make sense almost immediately yes so how have you played with that oh, and well, it's very have you gotten tough. comfortable with that i have so i'm a very um how do i say it i think i this, the idea of sati um, being satiated with something okay is something that i, I i've not been fully uh, i mean i've not been fully i've not fully wrapped my head around it because mm. I, I believe all of it is luck, Adarsh. And I know it sounds very wrong because you called me a fame chaser, which I... I, <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> I said nobody should. No, no, but I know. I, think I will still, never. Let me, let me rephrase. You framed... As, I think I love that fame chaser thing. But having said that, I, I believe in luck a lot. I think I've been mm. enormously lucky. Um, yeah, Tim, Tim Minchin, mm. this Australian mm. comedian, says something beautiful. He says that um, the moment you start thinking that you can fly too high or you think you're, you're too big for your shoes, just remember that you're the sperm that got lucky. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Nothing comes close to that. Yeah. yeah. I, I know I can wake up tomorrow and my dad had dementia and he passed away about a month ago. And uh, the reason I'm bringing it a up... A month not, ago now? Yeah. just Damn, man. Sorry it's to been, hear that. Thank you. It's been, a, it's been 45 days and he uh, had dementia uh, mm. and he was reduced to a person with no identity when he passed okay. because of memory loss. And I've seen that very closely. So mm. the, the the price you pay for all the creativity or to want to be passionate about something or want to do something, whether it's comedy or any other genre, is that you also have to have a very, um, you have to have a very deep understanding of human beings, deep understanding of the fact that you have one life and you're going to end up dying like Ricky Javis says very casually. And um, what are you, what's your purpose, right? Mm. So I feel for me constantly, it's been about that, especially mm. for the last decade or so. It's always been about if I'm doing something, um, in, in Constable Girpad, every episode has a message. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I... I, I didn't expect that, by the way. I didn't expect Constable Girpad to have messaging. Yeah. Like, and it it's there and it's very, like, it's very sweet yeah. and you can see it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. And that was purposeful because I feel... Afterlife affected me a lot as a, as a show. Mm. It really affected me a lot because I think, you know, some things are just priceless like a painting, right? Afterlife is a priceless yeah. communication that he has had with the audience. Yeah. Obviously, Constable Gilpare doesn't even come close to that. But for me, uh, whatever I want to do in my life now, mm. other than all the hard work and the intelligence and the wittiness and the craft, I think it's about the connection. It's about wow. how I'm able to connect with an audience, with the writing or with the direction and how the actors are able to connect. Mm. And if I feel, even if it's 10% or how much ever, you know, in terms of percentage that it, 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 it actually permeates to the person, mm. I, I would be really, really happy. Yeah. 
Wow. Uh, I, you know, uh, this is the beauty of a conversation, right? Uh, and I didn't know, I'll ask you this. Sorry to hear about your father and um, I'm glad that uh, you still walk like nothing happened. Uh, you're still here like nothing happened and that takes a lot of strength uh, but there is a pain associated with what course, happened yeah. and uh, it, it brings me to a very simple question but I'd want your take on it uh, connect connect pain and art for me how would you how would you uh, connect pain and art and what happens to art with more pain and uh, with more pain how do you start looking at art and you did mention a little about how you're focusing on connections yeah. but yeah if there are any other thoughts on this um without uh, pain there's no glory mm. um it's the, it's the truth it's pedro almodovar's movie pain and glory with antonio banderas right mm. um it's about I mean, uh, the fact that i feel every every creative piece of work will have a lot of that person behind it. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, it is, it is, it's just eventual, right? Mm. Whether it's a writer, director, like for me, speaking for myself as a writer, director, for me, I think I, I really, I really take a lot uh, out of what I observe in my daily life. Whether it's, you know, m my domestic help coming in the morning, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm, and I'm seeing her body language to be a bit different. I mean, I feel you have nothing to lose when you ask them what happened is everything okay that it really really changes your dynamic of how you function mm. how you think yeah I know I'm sounding morose about this but I think comedy for me is drama okay every genre is drama okay thriller is drama period is drama action is drama because in every genre that you are writing it's what you're eventually showing the audience is drama yeah and life is drama. <laughs> hmm. Even the smallest things that happen around me that I observe, I find it very dramatic. Hmm. I was traveling on a flight just a couple of days ago uh, when I was when I'd gone to Bombay for the for the screening of uh, Gir Pade and there was a very weird argument that happened for a seat where on the flight uh, there were there was a couple and the daughter sitting together, hmm. three seats, and the third seat was another gentleman. Mm. Um, who's who had bought that seat? I mean, mm. it was his, and he came and sat. And the lady and the, the husband and the wife are just requesting him to sit on the other seat there, which is the other aisle. Just seat. the next aisle seat. Because they want to sit together as a family. family. And they had an argument about it. Uh, so the, this other guy wasn't re He's ready like, for it. This is the seat wow. that I've paid for. It's two, two D. I've paid for the seat, and I want to sit here. I don't want to sit in two C. And they're like, but we want to sit together. He's like, it's one and a half flight. Uh, one and a half hour flight. You're anyway going to land and you can be together. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, this yeah. took 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah. And it took an air hostess. It took a bunch of other people to enter into the conversation. So within 10 minutes, there was insane drama. Mm. And this guy didn't relent. He was there. He didn't move. <laughs> so eventually the lady's like, if you just, I understood. You really want to sit next to me. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> that was People her understanding really like <laughs> of the situation right and the husband is on the aisle this guy is sitting here and I saw this and I can't write this I can't write it it's not a creative thing it's not, yeah, yeah, it's not yeah. imaginary yeah, yeah, it's yeah. happening mm. right it's real shit and that's why you said life is a drama in itself <laughs> there's absolutely, drama everywhere absolutely a lot of stuff that, have, mm. that we've worked on in Nagaraj were, were not you know, some beautiful uh, sparks from our brain. Mm. Uh, I'm not. I'm not trying to take away from what we did, but there were things that we saw in real life. Yeah, yeah. That made us put that into Nagaraj. You didn't have to speaking create on the it. call phone mm. like this. <laughs> is not from our brain. We saw. We saw a person. We saw a, a person in politics who was speaking like this on a call, and you were like, "This is how Nagaraj should, you know, answer the phone." So you know, I feel a lot of it is observation. Mm. Nice time to get into the Nagraj bit there, right? Uh, Kannada is a language. Uh, how how were you able to connect with it? And uh, how did you get, how were you able to bring English and Kannada together and still create comedy? Because you have nailed it. 
thank you you've nailed it you. and uh, yeah how was that experience and it's also saad khan doing this yeah. if you get what i mean of course <laughs> I don't actually. What are you trying to hint at, Arash? Are you trying to go somewhere with it? But boss, it is such. You know, if you look at it, yeah, it's fun. It's great. People applauding it. But you know, stop for a second and see the barriers that have been broken to make that piece of art, right? And it's amazing, man. People try, by the way. It's not that people are not trying to break those barriers. They're trying, but they haven't been able to do it the way you and Danesh did it. How do you feel about it today? I feel absolutely wonderful about it. I think a lot of it came from our. So I'm a Kannadiga. I've been born and raised in Bangalore. Uh, what do you mean? What do you mean you're a, like you? You speak Kannada at home. I don't speak Kannada at home. I speak but, English at home. I don't speak mm. Hindi at home. But I'm. Uh, but you have learned. Yes, I, and you've I, I have communicated studied, yeah. with people around yes, you. Yes, okay. I've studied in. I've studied um, in Bangalore. Lovely. I'm a. I'm a I love Bangalore, Bengaluru. Mm. I, I even if they change it some something else a couple of years later, <laughs> no pun intended. I will love. I love this city so much so that even though I'm working now in Bombay and mm. you know in Mumbai and in Hyderabad now, I will always live in Bangalore. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna leave. Right. Yeah. Uh, so that has always been very uh, strongly ingrained in me. Mm. Um, my professors uh, in my Ramaya College, my my PUC professors. I had this professor called. B S Suresh, and if okay. he's hearing this, if he's, I I I love him to bits. Which and college was uh, Joseph PUC? Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. SBU, yeah. yeah. Mm. And he was um, he had this really very interesting way of speaking. Like he had this nasal thing. He'd be like, "Shut up, rascal! Come here." <laughs> he like he would speak, but he would not open his mouth so much. And he was and he was a mathematics professor. And mm, I, I used to be. I was very naughty. I was very notorious in Joseph's. Mm. Did so he I also have Sandesh? Uh, Sandesh, no, I mathematics, no, no, no. Okay. I had, mm. uh, I had uh, uh, him for maths. I had a lot of interesting professors. So he mm. was my <laughs> maths teacher, and he would be like, uh, "Come here, Sad <laughs> Khan." So, <laughs> right? Yeah, <Yake. laughs> huh? okay. Right. So I, I, I used to, I, I so I think um, Danish brought his professors and what mm. his experience was, and I brought my yeah. professors, and we. I think when we jammed, we started writing. Mm -hmm. All of these ideas came together beautifully. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of experience, a lot of observation, and a lot of yeah. um, that. I think that's how we uh, see. For you to say that is a compliment that we broke barriers. But yeah. When we were writing it, we were never really aiming or trying that yeah. we're going to make this film like a, a cult film, or we're going to yeah. make this film a film that even after five years, like when I go to Mumbai now, sometimes. And uh, in con in conversation, when they ask me what I do, and I say I made this movie called Humble Politician Nagraj, I have non Canada uh, you know non Canadians who Audience. turn around and be like, "Hey, I have seen that movie, man! Wow, wow, my, I love it!" <laughs> and that guy is like, I say, "What are you? I'm a Gujarati. How are you seeing love it like that? Because I watch so much, I love it. So you know, I feel that it's become a certain way of speak. The you know that it, there's a jargon to yeah. Nagraj, right?" Uh, I think we were able to crack it because obviously Danish brings with him that talent of Nagraj the character, mm -hmm. and I think what I brought with me was a plethora of other characters that could then be a part of the Nagraj world. Yeah, uh, and uh, a lot of it also came from our education, our background, our yeah. observation, the people that have been a part of our lives. You know, yeah. whether they were teachers, professors, uh, even um, people who were um, uh, you know security guards, for example. Mm. Hey, hello, you know, like all of this, <laughs> right? <laughs> So we we saw all of that, and uh, I think that mm. uh, that with our convent school background, I think gave it a very good platform for whatever people saw eventually. Yeah, I think I have like three friend circles and one work circle, and there's not a single circle that I have where we don't have three four sp people speaking like that every day, right? That's the oh my god! Uh, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> It is it is our daily thing. Like I don't want to get into it, but we really live in that vibe, yeah. and it's crazy. Uh, uh, the thing I I was gonna ask you is, did now the uh, the brand humble politician Nagraj, did it take? Uh, did you estimate that it'll take that much time to create that brand? 
because there was a lot of work there was there was suddenly this you know and this is my perception right yeah. feel free to break it if it's not true the only perception i would like to break is the fame chaser one <laughs> the fame. everything oh, and man, all other perceptions like... are okay <laughs> no please go on. Yeah, please go on. there was this phase where it's like saad khan and danish just can't get over humble politician nagraj yeah. what i mean to say by that is that was the zone that was the world the work was happening around that brand the communication was happening around that brand the questions were how did it go where is it going everything was that was that the intent uh did you estimate it will take that long were you waiting to work on other things how did you look at that i definitely wanted to work on other things because i love um uh, experimenting and exploring mm-hmm. obviously but um everything that's happened to us from a from a meter of success from a meter of uh, uh of of reachability to the audience was not completely planned others okay it was it just happened out of the good work i constantly believe and i'm sure you know this that if your work is good if if it's reaching people if it's making them happy it's making yeah. them smile it's yeah. i still get messages and it's so heartwarming uh, once in a while to get a message saying i watched it again after 5 years and I I was on Amazon and I people had suggested and I never watched it but I watched it now and now I know what what the big fuss is all about. Yeah. Because it's really fun. It's amazing. Right? And I I feel like that when it stands the test of time like this it means a lot, right? So yeah. we never estimated that we are going to take this and make this into a in fact when the film was before it came out a small trivia for you um nobody believed that it's going to be a hit back behind the scenes. No. Oh, they all thought it's going to be a it's not going to be accepted to be honest i wonder who these people I'm are because like I'm not going to by the name. time it came out uh, one, like a one, huge one, fucking one, audience one waiting star, for it i'm not going to name the star one big star in our in our country actually said release the film on youtube it's not nothing's going to happen to this film what the flying fuck yeah mm. I'm, I, I, i will name this person in a couple of years when i am mm. much in a but much better better place in the industry now i won't because then i will not get any work um <laughs> uh, <laughs> But yeah, this person said <laughs> nice. that is a reason on YouTube, you know. Yeah, fuck you. And um, mm. and people around believe that we should actually, you know, everyone. And <laughs> I was, I was, I remember I was sitting in Chennai doing the last bit of it because the film was releasing in two weeks. I was doing the sound design with um, one Mr. Raj Raja Krishnan sir. Raj Krishnan sir is a national award winning sound designer, and he was um, the sound designer for Humble mm-hmm. because he'd also designed for Kirik Party and. Our yeah, producers yeah, yeah. were very kind enough to give Raj sir to us mm-hmm. to do the sound design and the final five point one mix that you hear in the in the theater. Yeah, in the theater. And up until then, um, the edit, everyone was just literally fingers crossed because they didn't know how the film had turned out and they didn't know that the film was going to do well. They were talking about the length of the film. They're talking about whether people are going to be okay with Nagraj speaking this kind of English through the film, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I walked in uh, in Chennai in Priya Darshan sir's studio where Mr. Raj sir works, and he uh, what what happens is his assistants usually line up everything. Then I sit with him for eight nine hours every day for seven days to do the final mix. That's the process. Each director sits with Raj sir to do it. And Raj sir, when I went to meet him at that time, he was this unassuming person in his mid forties, <laughs> um, um, a Malayali uh, who's in Chennai, and he met me. He he, he stood up and he shook hands with me. and he said your film is going to be a hit sad that's this beautiful is the first person who said this after a year of work because he had watched the film before because he has to now design the sound on the film and i said sir um thank you so much he said i laughed i enjoyed it. i didn't I, there was no subtitles i don't know kannada but i enjoyed what a wonderful what a wonderful i enjoyed <laughs> and then i had then he kept on reassuring because he saw the stress on my face he was like you don't think so i said sir no sir i'm getting very mixed vibes he said see till now i've done almost 350 films every film that i've said is a hit has been a hit just relax enjoy this next 6 7 days with me your film will be a hit don't worry hmm. and he was the first call i made when the film was announced it he was the first call i made because that for me is a human moment you can't write that yeah yeah you know, it's a human moment uh and i remember feeling so full in my heart that when everyone else is negating this one man who's saying it and i forgot about all the negations 
and I just focused on this one man, and um, you know, fate fate had the same thing in store for us. The rest is history. <laughs> As you say, yeah. The rest is history. I feel creative people. We we get that a lot, Adarsh. That ye ne ye ne chalega. It's not going to work. Illa. knowledge of not just making a great film but distributing it yeah we had great producers for okay. sure hemant and rakshit mm. who produced humble were yeah. great producers they and that would have like yeah. like really pushed the scene they really yeah. they, they were really um, you know they let me have a free hand mm. as a writer director they never interfered that's uh, sweet you know they were really really supportive and um, i you know i feel i i always i i have said it on social about them and i have but i feel this is a good platform that i feel uh, a writer director Uh, has to be backed by people and yeah. the, especially the close knit circle if they're not backed by them your technicians mm-hmm. then it becomes really difficult it becomes a very it becomes a very alone game mm. it becomes really lonely and i and i have faced that sometimes in humble itself i faced that when you know people were not thinking that it's going to do well mm-hmm. but it all changes by the monday mm. this happens on thursday friday mm. by sunday by saturday it's warmer by sun sunday it becomes really warm and by monday it's oh my god you're wow you are a wow you are a wow yeah <laughs> such a beautiful <laughs> that's nice uh, let's move on to the next thing uh, and uh, this is pretty interesting i have a few more topics we're just done 45 minutes and i hope you're not in a rush too no no i'm, uh, I'm enjoying I, this i have it's refreshing that it's not like the typical <laughs> laced questions of So uh, what is the uh, feeling? <laughs> <laughs> Thank God that's a compliment for us. But yeah, I definitely have a few more things, right? So uh, let's get into the improv bit, right? Yes. Um for me it was uh, it was like this group of people again who are attempting to bring a form of comedy uh and brand it well the thing with improv i felt is bangalore's done improv but they haven't branded it well they haven't structured it well and it's not been sold right and somewhere the improv was making an attempt at doing that and it had started to work and it's worked very well and people recognize it today at the same time i've had the feeling that the indian audience needed education on improv uh, needed to get comfortable with enjoying improv what are the expectations you need to go in for an improv show how was that experience of yeah building that brand uh did you get immediate uh, you know what do you say validation uh, yeah take me through that wow uh, so it we started in 2013 it's mm. been 10 years now the improv we never had to struggle others with the audience it's so crazy when i think about it salute to from that from our first show man that's a big show, flex sir by the way like i i don't even know how to answer that like i that's amazing to hear no but i'm not saying that we so have performed for less audiences we have performed for less mm. audiences but comparatively mm. if you look at a percentage we have performed for less audiences in our entire career of 10 years maybe 2% just 2% but our first show at allianz you know in bangalore our first show at allianz france was packed sold out mm-hmm. two shows because at that time my lineup was really long i used to have me as host and seven other actors yeah it's now become me plus three other people so four of us perform together but earlier i'm talking about 2013 2014 days we used to have seven people on the roster right because and i would always do the math with theater mm. if seven people individually are able to sell 20 tickets yes ordered 140 people will come then in that 140 people each person brings one person that's another 60 people you sold out so you sold out yeah right and it's always been like that for me i never ever did theater to i never did theater to uh, oh i'm going to do theater to enlighten at that time i did theater from the beginning to entertain that was mm-hmm. my only one e mm-hmm. i never had any other e no engagement no no enlightenment only entertainment 
But when I do con- content like Constable Girpade, I try to follow all the threes <laughs> because that's a different format altogether. Yeah. But for a two, for a one and a half hour show or for a seventy five minutes show, it's entertainment. Pure entertainment. If I achieve this, I'm good. Absolutely. Come have a good time. And what does audience remember when they when they go to entertain? The beginning and the end. They yeah. don't really think about the middle. So middle may. For lack of a better word, you can do some chutia pa. That's mm. fine. Some fuck ups here. Because, and there. Okay. because people are see at the end of the day, if people are seeing that these guys are coming, they have no script. They are taking a word from the audience and they are starting everything on the spot, on the go, off the cuff, mm. and they are doing it well. Where at least they are making us laugh, because and and then they see us struggle on stage to get the lines. That also is funny for them. <laughs> yeah. Right? So it's literally a you know it's, it's both ends of the both ends of the stick, right? Mm. But with us, what what happened was I got really lucky again, and I use that word a lot. <laughs> By the way, remind me ah, at the end of the thing, I want to say something about luck, and I want to ask you something. If we both forget, you remind me, please. That sounds like please a continue. continue. So I I I I got lucky in the sense that the audiences warmed up very fast because at that point in twenty thirteen, it was only stand up. When mm. the improv was launched, it was the first improv brand. Yeah, I agree. Mm. And it was the first improv brand even in the country because when we went to perform in Bombay. Other than us, there was only Veer Das doing shits and giggles yeah. at that time. Yeah. So when we performed in the comedy store about one year into improv in Bombay, we got a full house in Bombay, right? And we killed in that show, and we have, it was six of us in that show. Uh, and also, what really helped was the kind of people that came on the improv bandwagon with me. You know, everyone who's who achieves stand up success, and I can say this not in a pompous way, but factually, whether it's Kenneth Sebastian, Sumukhi Suresh, Danish Seed. They've all been on the improv platform, mm. right? And they've all got something or the other from the improv platform. Uh, and the audience and that's a stamp in a way, right? In like, a stamp in a way, yeah, and the audiences yeah. um, were beautiful. You know, even now the audiences when we perform, they they love it. They love the banter. Yeah. They love the fact that we are we're unprepared. We are unrehearsed. Uh, you know, the back end we do rehearse for improv because you need to rehearse even for spontaneity. You need to rehearse. Uh, which is something that I always have embedded with all the performers, and even in Bombay now, when I was doing Constable Girpade, I was shocked when I would uh, you know screen test some actors, and they were like, uh, "You have done improv, right?" And I'm like, "Finally, after so many years of five, six years of time put in, there's a callback of my work. Like there is, <laughs> there is a recognition yes. that oh, I know that you've done improv. That's really right? nice. Uh, over the last six, seven months, we've not done a lot of live shows. I'm trying to revamp the team. I'm trying to get to a lot of more, lot more performers. I'm trying to make, um, I'm trying to uh, seep in into the Mumbai circuit in terms of improv because that's something that I actually love doing. Mm. I love live improv. I love stage, mm. uh, and I love it because the immediate gratification of it. Yeah, and the fact that I can I can say sarcastic things and get away with it, <laughs> right? Yeah, like you know, if someone raises their hand with a lot of enthusiasm and says a really bad suggestion, I can be like, when the mic comes to you the next time, please don't give a suggestion. <laughs> 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 nice. Or if someone is, you know, trying to be really funny or trying to, you know, you mildly heckle, and mm-hmm. like, yeah, come on stage, let's come do improv <laughs> with us. And we've dragged those people, and they come and say, like, no, please, yeah. So I said, it's really easy to be a backbencher and do all this. No? Yeah, yeah, I've seen you do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that, yeah. I, I feel earlier it was very earlier. I also didn't know. Uh, I I didn't know any better because I was also learning. I'm talking about the early years where mm. I would come across as a bit rude and sardonic. Yeah. But then I think I I also figured out with with people around me, with my peers saying no, you know, Saad, you need to be a little bit warmer with the audience. You my can be sarcastic. Yeah, yeah just get yeah sober down a little more. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember there was uh, there, you know there's three guys, there's three single men who used to come for the show, and they would sit by themselves, oh, and I would I would not pick on them, but Have they would give me bad suggestions, like... and I would be like, get out of your room once in a while, oh, or shit, <laughs> like you know stop shit. stop like you know jerking off to Thor. Oh my god. <laughs> <Right. laughs> <laughs> because you know, he has his hammer mm. you don't need to use yours <laughs> oh shit <laughs> wow yeah better to sober down a little but no, I know but this is also see but, but I think it's the delivery of it so yeah, now, yeah. now I'm doing it in a more mm. less in a in a, in a, yeah. in a more sort of uh, I would say uh, uh, a manner that is not going to be offensive but mm. again as you rightly said in the beginning of the conversation the barrier right the barrier how do you come and off you... come to the edge of the cliff mm. and not jump off uh you know what you've done with answering this question is you've also 
said that the audience is ready for work like this the audience is ready for shows like this they've been waiting for it which is nice to hear because uh, the question kind of pointed towards you know audience uh, do they get it do they not and your answer clearly proved that no boss they are ready get like prepare put up a good show people will come people will smart, turn up others, yeah, yeah. it's smart we, we how how long are we going to be sitting in this bubble yeah, i yeah. was thinking that the audience ko hai na same package karke alag bottle mein de do yeah, no yeah. it's Nobody, been that's yeah. done now let's break that uh you know uh, your role on the improv uh in terms of you know you're like the host you're the front face your putting these uh, artists together uh, on the lineup uh, you're also this communicator with the audience uh, and which which makes sense why why you're a filmmaker because you're able to understand every angle you don't think from one angle but you're able to understand every angle uh, so you get it from both point of views you understand audience you understand you you understand actor you understand the director uh which brings me to the point in terms of how you choose people for your projects and how do you make those choices in terms of who's a go ahead and who's not and yeah how do you um again man great i think insightful question i think the for me the casting process is a very important process mm-hmm. um obviously you know the, a lot of times you look at the technical stuff how is my how what's my look and feel what's my palette and you know what's my mm-hmm. how's my editing treatment and mm-hmm. but what the audience is not thinking about all that the audience is going to see the performance the, even if your background is not as amazing as you thought it would they are only focused on what's in focus mm-hmm. and what's in focus are the performers what's in focus is the acting mm-hmm. what's in focus is the dialogues what's in focus is the reactions and the responses of other people that's all the audience is looking at and i feel that is very important for me especially when it comes to comedy when it's catered to an audience yeah. so when i'm casting whether it is kushal pawar for constable girpade whether whether it is prakash belwadi sir yeah for kgb's character in nagraj they have been decisions that are conscious decisions uh, and uh, decisions that have come from okay this person is going to be able to fit into this character and and be able to sh- project what the vision is because eventually it's all about that yeah. right um and i also do a lot of screen tests for example kushar pawar uh, i saw one of his reels about, about a year ago where he does a lot of these walk pops and he goes yeah. and does different characters yeah. i saw a guy in maharashtra in bombay being able to don many characters and i found him really really you know fun and he was very natural he was very organic when he was doing it so when uh, we started talking about who will be girpade <laughs> we had a bunch of options but i wanted him to screen test so he did close to about 4 5 screen tests wow. where i sent him one particular scene to do then i sent him one particular scene with his mother then i sent him something that i wanted him to improv and send something then i wanted something with body language and he was very up for it because he also wanted to do something meaty finally you know all those screen tests came together and then i was by the time he was in the third screen test i was like this is the this is the guy mm. and then it all culminated to me narrowing him with another person so by that time my other character demelo played mm. by neel salekar and sub inspector shinde played by rajesh that's so Shirji. perfectly yeah demelo is like yeah, yeah. It, it it took 15 minutes for me to understand that this is nice like it makes sense yeah and he was the only audition i saw really the first and last mm. i got a screen test he sent it and he also only sent one take <laughs> i saw that i saw it 3 4 times turn to my casting director and my and my and my ep and i said i don't want to see any more auditions he is demelo <laughs> because he brought everything out he has he looks like a an anglo indian right when like when yeah, i saw yeah. his uh, audition and you know the i didn't know that he's a very big influencer content creator i didn't know that <laughs> i'd seen one of two of his reels but i didn't know that he was so popular so well. uh, and then some uh, in sub inspector um, shinde rajesh mm-hmm. shirji mm-hmm. so rajesh shirji and neel were locked i had two options for gear pade two people narrowed down one was kushal hmm. and the other was another actor so i i thought it would be nice for me to do a reading with with them with so i called them to the office and i spent 3 hours with one batch 3 hours with the next batch and after and in the next batch was kushal was coming in and i was in the corridor saying bye to the other actor and kushal i saw kushal about 7 uh, 10 feet away from me walking into the office and the way he walked 
And he also started growing a moustache because he thought it would be nice for Gilbert to have a moustache. Have a moustache. I saw that. I saw his walk and I saw that he had moustache grown. I was like, this is the guy. Because I, by that time, I was like, the way he walked and the fact that he went through this trouble of wanting to show the director something else means that he really wants the part. And that's yes. how he... So I feel, again, to just to give a final yeah. answer to your question, all of this process is important for casting. You need mm. to do all of this. Otherwise, it, it, you cannot get a good cast. Yeah, it's not possible. Yeah. When you have like a very mainstream actor, yeah. right? very mainstream, very well recognized, got a lot of money, and then he or she signs up to work. Uh, and as a director, do you uh, say they're fucking up with something? <laughs> Do you have, are you the person who will just give it to them irrespective of who they are or like, uh, I'm, yeah, because I'm, that's so difficult. I mean, I want to know how you look at these things because I'm, as, yeah. as a, as your profession, it is your right to say, Hey, you're fucking up or you know what? I'll tone it down a little. Hey, you know what? This is where you can work better. These are the things like I feel you can do better in here and there, but then like, Say tomorrow you're working with this extremely successful person. How, how do you feel about telling that person? And are you comfortable with that? I'm uncompromising. So I will mm. never, and I don't mean to say it in a, in a braggish or a, you know, boastful manner or an arrogant manner. I think if a director, if um, him or her, they don't have the autonomy to be able to give their vision out with the utmost clarity, and with confidence and with a sense of belief, if they're not able to do that with any actor of any stature, then there's a big problem in the process. Mm -hmm. If I'm able to communicate what I want from an actor of whatever stature, which is how I would like them to perform and project that part, and if that person is going to be blocking, then our camaraderie, our collaboration is not going to work. It's yeah. going to show on the screen. Yeah, Audience is going to look at it and be like, there is 100% being a, dis a disconnect in what they're, they're showing. But if there is complete clarity, and which, which I have been lucky to have with all my actors so far, that is why the product has been successful. Hmm. Wherever I have not had that, the product will suffer. And you answered that in the previous question also. No? If you followed your process anyway... You'll get the vibe in the process as well. 100%. The process gives you enough room to measure some of these things also, right? Yeah, yeah. And which is why it's just great to have that as part of how you work and never skip it. Let's not assume. Yeah. Let's not assume this is going to work. Yeah. Codependency is not wrong. Yeah. An actor director is like a relationship. We have to be codependent. If I have a certain perception and I'm giving my directions in that way, and if the actor also brings something to the table, which is aligning to that vision, it is only a win-win. Yeah. But the moment the director blocks, I know directors also block. The moment I block, then no, 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 this is has to be done my way or the highway. That's also a problem. Okay? That's also an issue. Because then I'm not open to ideas. If I'm sitting and I'm like, and I've, I love this, right? When the actors, I remember scenes in Girpati and Dimelo where they would jam, they mm -hmm. would do the scene and they would mm -hmm. come to me. And I'm like, sir, we've done this, sir, look, this will work for you. And I'm like, please show it to me. But the moment I say, no, 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 let's go with what we did earlier. It's the moment I'm saying yes and I see that, automatically from the first take to the fourth take there's going to be a difference and what will I use in the edit the fourth take thanks for taking us um, through that uh, process of casting and it's uh, and it's only going to get better I think like the more you work like I'm sure like there are uh, there are things that you would have on your list in terms of how you can get better right I'm sure of like, course yeah all the time it's yeah a, i mean it's a persistent <laughs> craft it's a persistent process mm. i mean if uh, um, i just clint eastwood is 93 and he's still directing <laughs> he should be not gardening he should be lying down <laughs> he's directing and he's i think directing. Uh, when he directed the mule he was 89 mm. uh, i mean he's an inspiration to mm. the fact mm. that i i read i read somewhere that in the mule there was a uh, he he used to be driving this uh, this you know ford Ford, uh, he's, to, he's driving a car and his body double can do it because it's a drone shot. But he himself drove it. Because he's like, the my character is this age, needs to be driven a certain way. Oh, matter. I know it's the movie you're talking about. Yeah. Mule, yeah. It's uh, on that highway, right? Yeah. On that highway where he keeps trans... Uh, trans right. Yeah, I remember the scene. Mm, I mean, that's nice. Uh, mm. when, you, when you read stuff like that, or you see stuff like that, you're just like... <laughs> 
I mean, it, it just it just makes you feel so beautiful in, in, in the journey that you are at, right? Because mm. it's, it's going to be a persistent process. It is a journey. Yeah. Uh, no shortcuts. Yeah. They cannot be shortcuts. Everyone who's thinking that no, no, it's manageable. He's saying it because he's done it. No, mm. I'm, I'm doing a Telugu film now after this. Yeah, you mentioned. And Sangeet and I'm again, it's again a new <laughs> process altogether, right? Uh, anyway, so there are things that... Uh, I want to uh, jump to and uh, don't mind uh, if they're completely unrelated. No, it might be unrelated as topics, but it's definitely related to you. And I, I want to ask you these things, right? So first thing is, uh, so Saad, director, filmmaker, uh, is that the scene? Uh, or are we going to say Saad actor might overtake at some point? Uh, Saad improv specialist might overtake it are, are these all just always going to coexist uh, uh one is one tag going to take more limelight at some point how are you seeing this so i i i right now it's writer director for me mm -hmm. uh, definitely live improv will be the, the second thing that i'll be doing but i will want i might want to act but not right now in the future mm -hmm. when i have um, in my head accomplished what i need to do with writing and direction yeah I might want to um, perform in a, um, you know, in something that I've written and directed. Mm. Um, I, I think I might, but that's not right now, maybe in a couple of years, but it's something that I've been, uh, I have been thinking about. It's something that I think I would like to. And again, it's, it's only because I know no one else is going to cast me. <laughs> oh shit. So, so you're going to cast yourself. Yeah. So I think I'm just going to cast myself and, uh, Lovely. Like, like director. Uh, why not? Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Because I, yeah, I, I, mean, uh, I, I it's, it's, I'm not, I'm not, I think, yeah, there has been one, uh, I have been approached once after Humble for something, but then I, I think it just didn't work out or whatever, but yeah, uh, but I'm not primarily a, someone who wants to act. Got it, I'm, got it. I love being behind the scenes and I love being in control. Yeah. Uh, and I think mm. a lot of, that's the, another thing. Yeah. I love being in control. And mm. I think my problem would be if I'm, if I'm acting would be, I'll be mouthing the other person's lines in the scene. And they're like, what, why are you moving your mouth? Are you trying to say something like, like, you know, in Morse code or, uh, you know, something are you doing? And like, no, no, not really. Huh. Uh, have you ever thought of writing a book? No. No? no. You think you, you think you should like, no, maybe not right now at some point. 20 years, I'm going to bear it all. <laughs> What, what would this book be about though? uncensored unrehearsed <laughs> and that guy that name you will finally take in that book 100% 100% <laughs> it'll be emboldened it'll be upper caps <laughs> but what do you think the book can be about if Saad ever writes a book I think it'll be about the, the hard truths of the industry for sure ah. I am going to definitely mm -hmm. talk about the uncensored stuff that I cannot probably talk about it now but I would talk about it in the book for sure mm -hmm. This, uh, you know, this on Netflix, when you go to the, when you click on movies, there's a very clear option that says independent, yeah. independent movies and the perception of independent movies, you know, I'm not going to get into defining it because I don't think everyone understands it. And I think there are a few multiple definitions of how independent movies and cinema I've seen. So is Saad an independent movie filmmaker? I not anymore. I mm. started off with that for sure. Mm. I've been lucky to be associated with good banners. Mm -hmm. My own production company has produced Gir Pade as well. Mm -hmm. And I've been lucky that I've got my, my content on Amazon mm -hmm. Prime, on uh, Hotstar, mm -hmm. um, on um, Amazon Mini TV. Uh, so I have been, uh, you know, very lucky to have been associated with platforms and brands. Mm -hmm. uh, independent, I'm not saying there's something wrong with the word independent, mm -hmm. but aspiring filmmakers, you know, mm -hmm. filmmakers who are starting out, I think it's a beautiful platform, uh, mm. you know, a lot of, um, it, it's a big learning, you know, that you were able to get a chance to make a movie, even if it's a 30 crore, 30 lakh budget, not a 30 crore budget. And if it's a 30 lakh budget, you can still make a movie that you like to make, that you want to make. Mm. You know? I have, I've seen a lot of independent films in my life and I see a lot of low budget films as well. I see, I see every kind of content, right? But it's about the content in itself. Nobody really, when when lunchbox came nobody uh, uh, nobody asked anyone how much was this made for they loved the intent of the film hmm. uh tell me if i'm saying this right when and you know i'm not i'm not standing by these definitions i'm 
asking about right i'm trying to uh, showcase uh, maybe a majority of what people believe does a, when an independent movie or when an independent filmmaker get uh, get success is it termed as critically acclaimed does that make yeah, sense yes, of course but uh, why isn't it termed as mainstream if it is really critically acclaimed and the masses have watched it why isn't it called as mainstream are, and what's the difference are, those are tags others i mean yeah that's why i'm asking you because i don't i don't fucking get it right like yeah. because there are certain films that have re- are really mainstream movies because yeah. the masses have watched it yeah. then why are you tagging it as a critically acclaimed movie because again the problem with the tag of critically acclaimed is something else true but again it, it it's um, it's subjective no mm. think about it this way i i believe that if for example today if any of my work is taken and they then put a tag to it mm. that is not my problem i, I only care about audience i only care about audience I'm, i mean i'm being very frank i don't think i don't even think too much about you know reviewers or critics because i feel it's the audience that defines your film mm. right if a critic gives a movie two and a half stars and the film does better business than that star mm. review it has nothing to do with how that film is eventually going to be tagged or named it doesn't matter mm. and i don't have a personal problem so tomorrow if i make a film that is commercially acclaimed but falls in the critically acclaimed uh, man uh, you know uh, category. Uh, category i'm okay mm. i mean I, the, the the film's job is done right it's like this i do an improv comedy show you come with your family mm. okay you've come with say four people mm. you your uh, you know your better half and your mm. parents mm. different generations mm. uh, let's throw in a younger brother who's gen z five people have come for the show okay five people have come for the show these five each of them will have a different take away you know from the show mm. yeah but if your parents come out and they are progressive and have used bad language in the show for example and they're like no i loved the fact that in the in the middle of the show he said fuck for example i loved it the gen z might be turned no 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 i think they should be a little bit more you know uh, you should they should not uh, uh, put us in this wrong path if that guy says that mm-hmm. and if the couple the, in the center you and your better half if you have a very different perspective at the end when all of you all have gone now if i do another show and you all come back together as a family i've only done a good job mm-hmm. but out of the five one shows up then i've done the show has not done a good job mm-hmm. but the fact that you guys communicated and you had different takeaways from the show that is not my problem that is your internal family dynamic mm. i think that's how i see the entire fraternity mm. even all these tags and doesn't how matter we are seen doesn't matter if that category doesn't is. matter if the person is watching it if they're lapping it up that's all that matters nothing else <laughs> it's the reach it's it's actually the reach and it's the content creators uh, terminology right today's content mm. creators if they're moving from 1 mil to 1.5 mil as in their in their journey they put on they put out for that 1 to 1.5 mil they put out 100 videos mm. that 100 videos has taken them through that another you know that yeah. dimension or that increase mm. who's to say which video did better for them and who's to say which video actually didn't do well for them yeah. it's they will obviously do the statistics behind the scenes but the audience doesn't know that no they are yeah. watching it because they love the guy's content that's all mm. that's what matters just focus on that yeah mm. that's what matters well, there are there are directors who have made independent films and then went on to make commercial films Nikhil Advani was making yeah. stuff and then he yeah. went and made Kalono yes. and it was a big hit yeah. right so uh, Sandeep Reddy Vanga for mm. Arjun Reddy it was very tough for him to make Arjun Reddy today look at where today he is <laughs> right mm. I get it what's like that one uh, filthy rich thing you want to buy in your life uh, <laughs> once filthy rich thing that I want to buy in my life Um, I think gratitude, man. Oh, is it is it true? Really? Yeah. That's a pretty. Um, that's not the answer I was expecting. But you want to explain it? I'd love to hear your take I mean, on that. I um, mean, the filthy rich thing that I, I mean, I would like to buy it because I feel as you as success starts coming into your life, you start being less grateful. You start realize, you start thinking that oh, I have done it. It's me. and I, i see a lot of people who say that and i've seen it in my own life where people i worked with have attributed the entire success to themselves but it's not it's a machinery it's a cog we're all a cog in the machinery mm. a lot of people come together to do it you know i 
I'm sitting here and you know you can say whatever it is but I wouldn't have been able to do any of my projects without my producer my brother Maz my editor Bharat who has been with me for so long my my cinematographers of my projects whether it's Orko or whether it's Vineet for this last project my associate directors none of it is possible without all of them hmm. imagine I just sit and write a script I'll alone I'll, I'll be able to do <laughs> those, those, Nag- those Nagaraj was like my god he's gone mad he's lost it he's lost it he's exist completely he's a he's a he's a stupid fellow yeah, yeah a really dumb idiot right i i am I, i feel like it's uh, that the word the gratitude is is something that now it's, you need to buy it i feel you know because oh, otherwise shit. otherwise internally nobody wants wow. to be grateful That's they want up. to turn around and say i have done it okay yes you might have done it that part of your talent yes you've done it but for that talent to be recognized five people have shared it then 20 people you need to be grateful that they if you would have made the content people would have not watched for whatever reason hmm. right people made films during the demonetization phase hmm. they made amazing films who watched those films were they released in theater no so hmm. that's why luck it all brings brings me back to that word hmm. any uh, that's a great answer man by the way that's because like, I, i don't uh, expect w- that what are we going to buy that is going to stay with us other like a hammer but what is going to happen <laughs> I'll drive to Hama for one day. Two days I'll drive. Third day one guy will drive. Hey, I'm bloody chappal. Such a bloody, bloody lousy car. You are getting over here. Huh? What do you think is wrong? You are road. You are father road. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right? I'm saying like, even if I buy, buy the, the I, I love sneakers. Even if I buy the most expensive sneaker or whatever, I'm going to wear it and it's going to get spoiled and within a, a week or two weeks it's not going to be new. I, I feel that is and I, it's again this entire thing is not that i'm spiritually enlightened or i'm philosophically uh, you know philosophically trying to make this, this seem like no it's yeah, the truth it. it's the reality hmm. nothing that we have is going to be with us forever period okay does sad khan dream about like awards getting like an oscar i feel like it's pretty cool for a filmmaker yeah, of course to i do I mean, every red i think any filmmaker who makes yeah any filmmaker who makes is not dreaming about that then i feel that somewhere they are not very i think they 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 are questioning about themselves about their talent no i of mm. course dream about it you want to walk that carpet 100% yeah. you want to be with those people and like i don't it's not about being with those people i want to walk that carpet and i want to have that award so that after that i'm enough for myself mm. you feel it's possible why not It's a, it's a dream i mean everyone dreams all filmmakers dream all actors dream uh, it again luck if it's written in my kismat <laughs> and if it's there and any anything comes in my way if it's written in my destiny and my in luck has its doors open for me it is going to happen nobody can stop it i'm you know bro i know i know i'm i'm i sound like this guy who's probably going to end up being a tarot card reader or whatever but the the deal here is i believe in it because i have everything that's happened to me is primarily because i've been lucky Mm. I'm not very talented. I'm very honest. I'm not very talented, but I'm very hard working. But at the same time, I'm not. Uh, there are a mason is talented, but that doesn't mean every mason can make their own apartment or building. They'll probably be masons for twenty years till they actually make their own house. Hmm. Right. I feel that has stuck with me. I, I, a, a, a director told me this, or a theater director told me this very early in my career. He told me this. He said that. Uh, one uh, a younger actor he was asking questions about what you guys want to do and one actor said that i will make my own destiny you know we are all like 18 19 year olds and he was he's he's passed away now mr r nagesh he was a kannada theater director he used to direct a lot of girish kannada plays oh. very popular he got a karnataka state award as well and i had the opportunity of working in one of his plays as an actor that's sweet and he said how are you going to do well he said i'll do a lot of hard work sir and i'll become successful one actor said he said even mason does hard work he'll make his building <laughs> and i remember there was a spin drop silence and you know all of us and i that stuck with me man mm. i was like oh wow that's intense yeah i think uh, you know as a filmmaker like with a uh, certain projects and i'm sure there are uh, there's a journey to make it to that red carpet uh but in the knowledge i have like i feel like uh, you can be india's attempt at making it 
uh, to that red carpet and That's holding that award That's yeah and you. the way you've looked at filmmaking and this grind of like starting from nothing right i feel like somehow uh, these type of journeys have the ability to end up there and it started early that's another thing right you started early as well and i feel like that's another sign of this having the ability to make it uh, to that stage and uh, you know and then you'll be in the in bangalore times again but this time like a much bigger picture maybe <laughs> <laughs> i mean um i feel all of that aside i i, I again go back to what i said to you in the beginning i feel it's about um how many people are you able to affect in the mm. positive manner and if uh, whether it's in your work environment or whether it's your the like i feel like it's a mind share right mm. it's a mind share and a time share if someone is coming up to you in whatever capacity and saying hey i like your work that person has taken that one minute aside of their life to come and give you that Mm. and that's where the gratitude part is very important because if you're not able to be grateful to that moment mm. and if you're not being rightful and correct and honest about that moment then everything that you're doing is a lie mm. and the fact that we are anyway whatever we are doing is drama is like is, mm. is is fiction right yeah. but it's the intent with which you do it and of course in my future i would like to tell more human stories yeah. i really want to i really want to tell more human stories i I watched this Iranian film just about a week ago. Iranian I, film. I watch a lot of films, man. Very like, fancy, uh, you are. <laughs> very fancy. I'm so fancy. Sad is like, like, like what's this I'm, Iranian I'm, film? I'm, I'm, I'm like boss of fancy chairs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all those things that you want to add to. But yeah, I, I, I and this, okay. this film called Laila's Brothers. Ooh. And it's it was in the Cannes Film Festival last year. Okay. It was also nominated for the Palme d'Or, mm-hmm. and it was. I watched it and it's a it's a family drama mm. and it's 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 insane it's such a simple idea about uh, only uh, do- the daughter she's the only daughter her name's Laila and she's in her early 30s and she has four brothers mm. and it shows about how there's no jobs for the four brothers and she's the only okay. earning member okay and it just shows the pathos and what they're going through mm. and the drama of a family it's a simple idea but it it just it's so much there's so much hope in it by the end of it you know and i feel like what is the audience looking for at the end of a film or a web series what do they what is their take away why do they want to watch why 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 do they like to watch an afterlife or why do they like to watch um say um, a movie like oppenheimer right mm. or, or you know they want to take something away yeah take something at the end of it something that can stay with add them. somewhere yeah. in their personal life in some way or the other or their professional life yeah 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 right uh so this is one thing i was talking about luck right and i think this is the yeah good note to kind of end this conversation on uh i don't think there's luck sad i've never like i uh, it, it's you know when you say when you say you know i've been lucky or you know these things happened by luck it's almost under crediting according to me i have a different way of looking at it. i i feel like see again i'm not like the most spiritual person but i feel like i get energy i get vibe uh i understand like there is this i understand there's a force that um is supporting certain journeys and it's usually like a 50 50 thing right like you you take the first step and then the things around you take the next step but you always got to take the first step you're ideally calling that second step luck <laughs> your perspective no? yeah you're calling that second step luck because it's not luck because if you don't take the first step the second step never happens the and the reason we call it luck sometimes is we are like how the fuck did that happen without effort but that's the beauty of the 50 50 where you do the 50 and then the 50 comes to you anyway you don't need to figure out how it came but all you need to figure out is your 50 because that's in your control correct and if you're listening to your heart and if you're doing everything uh, that you're capable of then there's no way it's not going to work and that's no, how i, I, have, I believe yeah. i believe but I, the reason i okay i no i appreciate mm. that perspective and i respect it mm-hmm. uh, i i really love different perspectives at all time mm-hmm. I mean, i'm not saying that my perspective is the best or mm-hmm. my perspective is should, should be the you know the law of nature i'm just saying that it's for me personally uh since i've seen a lot of people around me going through a lot of things in their life mm. where things were going really beautiful and then something happens 
and that can be an act of nature act of yeah. god act of whatever superpower that you call it right so i'm a big believer of that i believe that um i can now I'm, now i'm speaking to you smoothly and i'm speaking to you you know uh, with all the different vocabulary elements that i have you are doing that yeah. we can wake up tomorrow morning and some nerve in our brain yeah yeah some connection something can happen i'm i'm only i'm only very mindful of that yeah which is why i give luck such an important or even does destiny for destiny matter, yeah an important uh, i i give that an important share of what my life is all about or what our lives are all about is what i'm thinking yeah i mean even i have thought of that like why us why us and why yeah. and I, somewhere i started to believe that because uh, there are only some people who have the heart to give it back to people and ensure more people walk with them and if you have a heart for that and then you and that's that's where you get help not everyone gets this type of help and that's where it also goes back to how aware are you of uh, people around you in your circle are you being ensuring being forward being forward is very yeah important. Being i think forward is very important that's what it is it's very important i think uh, even when when you're working with people who are assisting you or who are yeah. working with you i think it's important to respect their time value them at all times and i've seen i've seen i've been devalued a lot you know i've mm. been devalued a lot and i and i never understood it yeah. then i started blaming myself i was like maybe i am the reason that i am being devalued mm. maybe i am expecting a lot but yeah. that's not the case it it's it, it starts and ends with you if you look at things and if you look at people and if i i see that there have been times in my in my shows or my films where even a light man mm. uh sits standing behind the monitor has given an idea mm. and that that idea has been valued and if it's if that idea is valued no that person will remember it for life yeah yeah that's a great note man thanks sad thank you thanks for ending it on that note uh, i hope you had a good time oh i had a lovely time man i mean <laughs> i mean i i chased this interview so I mean, uh, <laughs> I, I, I <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't see I, I that coming. I, I, then I'll just sort of close the circle back. Yeah, but yeah, it's been fun. I wish you all the best with uh, with everything that you're doing, and I think all the people I, I've seen the other people that you've interviewed as well, and yeah. I think there is a very good flow to it. Okay. Um, you made me feel comfortable. Give me maza, <laughs> some water. <laughs> And I, I think uh, it's, it's awesome. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, a little story to end this uh, episode with, and I think it's pretty relevant to how things uh, work out. This was two thousand seventeen, okay, and two thousand seventeen, two thousand eighteen. So I had initially just started uh, hosting shows, and by hosting shows at that point, it was birthday parties and mall events, and now it's of course a very different journey. And this particular mall, I won't call it out. uh gave me like a five day show saying you know what every evening come here and entertain the people and it was decent pay at the time and i took it up and i was very excited on day 3 the mall guys tell me hey you know what uh, monday through friday friday uh, saad khan and danish seta coming here to do the improv um uh, i said wow that's really brilliant like uh, that's crazy Oh, please mute that shit. <laughs> Let's right? mute that. Yeah. Why not? A, no, no, no. It was a good no. event. Yeah, yeah it was, but, but not I where. Remember. Not where the story is going. <laughs> but I remember though. Anyway, ha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ha, yeah. And then, uh, so I tell these mall guys that uh, hey, you know what? After like I'm ending, like I've slogged my ass off for five days. I want to meet these guys. Like I've seen them. time and again and i want to meet these guys and they said yeah yeah sure you're the mc uh, you've worked with us yeah why not i'll i'll make you meet them and then you guys came there and i said uh, okay no it's time to meet them i've been waiting to meet them and uh, this guy says yeah 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 you know what uh, uh, not right now not right now and i said yeah yeah fine i get it right like pre show like you all are probably prepping or i don't know <laughs> what was going on and it never happened did they let you meet us no oh man that's why i didn't want to mention mention them <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 this mall doesn't exist <laughs> <laughs> no but you know where i want to take that and that's and i have nothing to do with it for whatever the fuck reason that didn't happen i don't care but uh, yeah it's pretty awesome for me to sit across you and do this it's today it's a very good story man it's a very yeah. good story to end this wow yeah. yeah i wish i was one of the mall people <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i don't mean to put you on the spot because you had no idea about yeah, this yeah no i if yeah. i would have had an idea or if i knew 
uh, in future I'll just leave you to buy you then I'll be like you know there's a guy who's in the, in the future please call him he used to meet me but yeah, I, but yeah that's how that's just how things go and I've learned that's that a good and, journey man that's a good yeah, journey yeah yeah it's pretty awesome man and thanks for coming here and thanks for making us feel uh, so you know it's like a stamp for us right like every time we do a great story it's a stamp for us that we need to keep doing this and these cameras need to keep recording so thank you so much thank for that so much. thank you thank you sir thank you so much this is awesome <laughs> cheers cheers bro cheers, cheers, cheers. this was uh, episode number 75 uh, with saad khan if uh, you know you've enjoyed this please do let us know uh, watch constable get pade yes on amazon mini tv it's fucking it's, trending thank bro. you so much thank you man it's thank right so up much. there thank you so much <laughs> very sweet of you yeah. cheers cheers and we're going to be watching saad uh, wish him the best uh, Uh, thanks for joining us this was episode number 75 uh, we'll see you on the next one cheers <laughs>